Hello, this is Pastor Jim Ponko with the Midweek Meditation for March 17th, 2021. I'd like to begin by reading for you uh, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, beginning in the 27th verse. It's Matthew's account of how the soldiers treated Jesus on the day of his trial. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him, and then they led him away to crucify him. You know, the brutality that is described here is breathtaking in its cruelty. But let me ask you a question. Can you imagine something like that actually happening? I, I sure can. I mean, we understand how cruel people can be, especially people who have power over other people, especially people of a different race, right? People can be incredibly cruel to others. And we know about cruelty like that because we've seen it. We've seen it on television. We've read about it in history books. Maybe we've even seen it with our own eyes. Many of us, in fact, know how cruel people can be because we've experienced it. Now, I'm not saying that you've all been brutally beaten at one time or another, but maybe that has happened. But I would guess that many of you have experienced the cruelty of a bully. Now, you know, some people say that bullying in the schoolyard or a boss's harassment of his employees is, is a normal part of life and it's not a really big deal. But all I can tell you is that people who say something like that probably weren't bullied in school, probably never had unwarranted abuse from their boss. For example, studies have shown that the victims of schoolyard bullying are far more uh, likely to struggle with anxiety, depression, and substance abuse later on in life. I mean, all through life. Remember what your mom used to say? Sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never harm you. Turns out, mom was wrong. Bullying hurts, and can it hurt deep down inside of us. Now, I might be digressing. Clearly, Jesus' suffering at the hands of 600 to 1,000 soldiers in the Praetorium in Jerusalem can't be compared to an 11-year-old boy surrounded by a bunch of name-calling children who kick the books out of his hands. But there is a correlation between bullying and and what happened to Jesus. If we are not surprised by the soldiers' behaviors, it's because we understand the human capacity for cruelty. And isn't human cruelty one of the things that Jesus came to this world to save us from? If you were ever bullied or harassed by someone who was bigger or had more power than you, You've probably had revenge fantasies. You know what I mean? We often wish that bullies would get a taste of their own medicine, and we wish that because we can't do anything to stop them. Did you know that most bullying and harassment is legal? You actually can't press charges against a name-calling kid in school or a tormenting boss at work as long as the boss at work is equally mean to everybody. But our hearts long for justice, right? We say people shouldn't be treated like that. And you know what? God feels the same way. In Proverbs, we are told this, 
There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict. See, God is more offended by bullies than we are. And here's the thing. God's justice must be served. And there's a simple reason why God must be just. And that is because He loves people. He loves you and me because He made us. And when somebody is bullied, when somebody is harassed, when somebody is hurt in that way, they should be punished because He feels our pain and our hurt. And not only should they be punished, but they should be punished in a, in a way that befits the crime. Bullies should be bullied. Harassers should be harassed. But at the same time, God wants everybody to be saved. He wants everybody to be forgiven. He wants everyone to have their sins washed away so that they may be with Him in heaven. And that includes the bullies. So what does that mean? It means that when God sent Jesus to be our Savior, he came to take the punishment that bullies and mean bosses deserve too. Think again about the way Isaiah describes Jesus' crucifixion. We considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. Jesus had to face ridicule, cruelty, and abuse by people who were using their positions of power and authority to bully other people. Be why? Because that's who he came to save. People who use their position of power to bully other people. Remember what Jesus said as he was hanging on the cross about his tormentors? Father, forgive them. You see, Jesus was surrounded by that hostile mob of soldiers because humans love to gang up on the weak. They love to gossip about them, to cancel them, to ridicule them, to exclude them. Jesus endured the indignity of being stripped naked because humans love to look at embarrassing pictures of famous people. Jesus was mocked and spit on and struck because people love to hurt each other. They do it on the playground. They do it at demonstrations. They do it at an arrest. They do it at war. You see, Jesus got a taste of the bully's medicine, but more than just a taste, he drank the cup down to the dregs. And that would be enough. I mean, that would be enough of an amazing fact about Jesus that he had suffered for them. For, it would be impressive if Jesus had endured this part of his passion specifically for the sins of the bullies. But never forget that Jesus endured this for me and for you, too. Now you can say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm, I'm no bully. For one thing, I've never been in a position of power or authority to bully anybody else anyway. And maybe, but have there ever been times when you could have said something and you didn't? In the book of Proverbs again, there is a man by the name of King Lemuel and this is, was his advice in Proverbs. He said, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. You know, in our culture today, there is a lot of discussion about the evils of bullying. But ironically, it almost seems like there's more bullying going on today than ever. Have you read about those people who lost their jobs because of a picture? A picture that, a, that was taken 20 years ago when they were in college? 
people have no respect for elected officials. Nor can they say anything kind to somebody whose political views are different from theirs. People don't hesitate to berate the clerks or the customer service reps. Uh, these are people who have no control over their company's policies. But people feel that they can do it because the customer is always right. We listen to commentators who misrepresent public figures and justify their lies because they have great ratings. And then people continue to listen and watch them anyway. Is someone any less of a bully if they are a part of the crowd cheering on the one who's throwing out the insults? It may be true that there is safety in number, in numbers, excuse me, but there's no less guilt for all who are involved. As we read about the soldiers' brutality toward Jesus, it might be good for us to ask a question. If I had been one of those soldiers, if I had been in that mob of men that day, what would I have done? Would I really have stood up for Jesus? Or would I have said nothing, afraid to speak up, and therefore shared in the responsibility for their brutality by my inaction? But you see, that's why Jesus endured their cruelty. That's why he suffered at their hands in the first place. You see, whether we are aware of it or not sometimes, we have often been the silent partner in the world's cruelty, either by remaining a member of the mob or by failing to speak up against the world's injustice. But Jesus was punished in our place. He remained silent for the times when we remained silent and no one spoke up in his defense. And because Jesus was punished, we are forgiven. Forgiven to live a new life in a new way. Forgiven to step away from the mob, to show love to the stranger and compassion for those who are around us, to speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. We have been forgiven to show concern for the outsider, the loser, and to show love, yes, even for the bully. Amen. Let's pray. Son of God and true Son of Man, your great love for us sinners soared to its loftiest heights when you willingly bore the pain and shame of the cross to save us from everlasting death. Grant steadfastness to our faith, faith that we ever treasure your love. Um, you made yourself an offering for our sins. Enable us through the Spirit to follow the example of your love and humility by doing what pleases our Father in heaven. Teach us to be loving and merciful so that we gladly help those who are in need and show patience and forgiveness to those who sin against us. Do not allow us to be discouraged by the crosses you may call us to bear. Give us boldness at all times to confess you as our Lord and Savior before an ungodly world and nation. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen.